Hello everyone! Have you ever wondered what can be found inside the objects that you use on a daily basis? Or at least from time to time? Most people come up with similar questions when they're children. Some people try to satisfy their curiosity by sawing the TV remote in half and gutting out the sofa cushions, while others look for answers in books or online. <laughs> But what if this curiosity doesn't fade with time? But conducting experiments on your own seems scary, and the internet doesn't provide any decent answers. Do not despair. Especially for you, we've gathered the most diverse and even unexpected items to look inside of and find out what they're made from. Let's get it on. Fireworks It's not a party if you don't have fireworks, right? After all, fireworks make everything cooler, and they've been cheering people up for centuries. It's known that they were invented in China in the 12th century BC. That is a long time ago. But despite having such a long history, many people still don't know exactly how fireworks work. Well, let's find out using this firework as an example. The black chips at the bottom are an expulsion charge. There's a wick that ignites and then propels the firework into the sky. But this is just the beginning. Inside, there's a burst charge surrounded by balls. These are pyrotechnic elements. At the highest points, the burst charge ignites and tears the shell of the firework with great force, igniting and scattering the balls in all directions. That is what we see as multicolored sparks. The location of these elements defines the pattern of the fireworks. You've probably noticed that some of them are round, while others don't have any particular shape at all. And the color of the fireworks depends on the chemical elements used. For example, calcium allows you to create sparks of a very beautiful orange color. Potassium is used for pink sparks, and cesium makes it possible to obtain indigo-colored fireworks. Submarine Communications Cables when it comes to the World Wide Web, we imagine something invisible. Something you can't feel, but can use. Like Wi-Fi. Well, that's partly true. But still, every bit of information travels along real wires, and some of them are laid out on the ocean's floor. That's why there are a number of requirements for such wires, or rather thick cables. They must be strong, waterproof of course, able to withstand huge pressure, and serve long enough. Because replacing a submarine cable is complicated and quite expensive expensive. But let's take a better look at what this cable is made of. There's nothing interesting inside, because the most important thing about submarine cables is protecting the functional part. The topmost layer of the cable is made of polyethylene. No other material is as accessible and as well protected against water, salts, and basically everything, even sulfuric acid, as polyethylene. Next, there is another synthetic material, BOPET film. It stands out for its thickness and durability. After this layer, you you can see the cable reinforcement. It's meant to give the whole structure enough rigidity and strength, apart from additional protection. For example, against sharks. These marine predators often try to snack on deep water cables and deprive people of the internet. Then comes the aluminium water barrier, which is used as another layer of waterproofing and shielding for the cable. Then a copper or aluminium tube, inside which are placed other tubes with fiber optics inside. And all this construction is laid at great depths across seas and oceans. Oceans. Sounds complicated? Oh, you bet it is. And it's also that we can send each other pictures of cats. And watch this video, of course. Football Helmet Helmets are one of the most important pieces of protective equipment used by American football players. It's vital to protect your head in such a tough sport with constant collisions, unless you want to end up in the hospital after every game. A professional football helmet consists of several elements. A shell, a lower jaw guard and a foam pad, a mask, a chin strap and a mouth guard. But there are also modified versions. For example, helmets by Vysis feature many layers, which reduce the impact of blows. Since classic and seemingly durable helmets don't stop players from getting concussions and various injuries, it's time to change the design of the protective device. These helmets also have a number of plates that sort of stack up under strong influence and absorb the impact, redistributing it over the entire surface. Bowling Ball you might think that there's probably nothing simpler than a bowling ball. Well, it's just a ball after all, right? Okay, it's a heavy ball, but it's probably just made of some special material. 
Well, actually, it's a lot more complicated than it looks. First of all, bowling balls are not monolithic. It's not like it's a whole piece of metal or something like that. In fact, a modern bowling ball consists of at least two main elements, the core and the coating. The core of an ordinary rental ball is made of polyurethane foam filler, while the coating is made of plastic. Some time ago, rubber was used, but the increasing popularity of bowling forced people to look for a cheaper option. But there's also professional bowling. Professional players use a special ball, consisting of a lot of fillings and blocks. This equipment is especially appreciated by professionals, because you can curve the ball and do other amazing tricks with them. The core of a professional bowling ball includes a weight block and the cover stock, which forms a sphere. The weight block can be made up of several parts and have a wide variety of different and even strange shapes, depending on the idea of the manufacturer and the purpose of the ball. Of course, handling a bowling ball requires experience and a lot of skill, but the efforts usually pay off. Basketball it might seem that there can be nothing interesting or unusual inside a ball. Air and some rubber, right? Well, if you didn't tear apart a basketball to find out how it was made when you were a child, it's time to make up for it now. Oh no, we're not cutting anything this time. Instead, let's take a look at the manufacturing process. It all starts with a sheet of rubber. Using a press, a worker turns it into a workpiece. It doesn't look like a regular basketball, or like a ball at all, but wait until it's inflated and heated. The next stage is applying the nylon threads. While the future ball spins, they cover it, a bit like a spider web wrapping up poor Frodo. It gives the ball strength. A mixture of synthetic and natural rubber is used to make the coating, which is then painted orange and cut into pieces to be bonded again using a special mold. The workpiece wrapped in nylon threads is placed inside the same mold, and the ball is ready. All that remains is transferring the pattern onto the ball and inflating it to make it perfectly round, and then deflate it again, after which it can be sent to the stores. Yes, it's really much more complicated than it looks. Rattlesnake Tail even if you live far away from rattlesnakes, you're probably familiar with this frightening rattle. That sound means you're in trouble. The snake is kindly asking you to stay away, or better yet, leave it alone. But how exactly does this rattling tail work? One could assume it's like a maraca, but it's actually slightly different. The rattle is formed from interlocked ring-shaped segments made of keratin, and yes, they're actually hollow inside. The familiar frightening sound comes from these rings vibrating against each other. By the way, snakes become capable of producing this sound after the second ring is added to the first one. But the size of the shaker is not related to the age of the snake. The fact is that this part of the tail is renewed every time the rattlesnake sheds its skin. This can happen one or several times a year, depending on the species, its nutrition, living conditions, and so on. Every time it sheds its skin, the number of rings may increase, slightly changing the rattling sound as well. Presidential State Car we can hardly imagine more protected cars than the ones used by presidents, especially if we're talking about the President of the United States of America. This car, known as the Beast, is designed in such a way that it can withstand even a direct explosion. Its fuel tank is protected with armor and special foam to prevent an explosion. The doors have no keyholes and can't be opened from the outside unless you know a special way, which is obviously only known by the Secret Service. The vehicle also features 13 centimeter thick bulletproof glass class. a fully sealed interior that can protect passengers in the event of a chemical attack, and a multi-layer body made of various materials, including aluminium and steel. Rumor has it that every door of the Beast weighs as much as the doors of a Boeing 757. Inside the Beast, there are oxygen tanks, blood supplies for the President in case of an unexpected transfusion, and shotguns for the guards. Are you thinking that this isn't just a car, but a real mobile fortress? Well, you're right. The Beast is also equipped with night vision optics, a tear gas cannon, and smoke grenades. It's said that its door handles can be locked so that anyone who tries to open them from the outside will be electrocuted as well. And to top it off, the car has run flat tires, which allow it to keep moving even after a puncture. Hey, stop being lazy, it's time to use that brain of yours. Welcome to Brain Time. Incredible facts from the past, the present, and even the future. The power of nature and wild animals, amazing facts and unsolved mysteries. 
You'll find all this and much more here. Subscribe now. You won't regret it.